Hey, Peter, how's it going? Hey, Siraj, how are you doing? Pretty good. Can I ask you 67 questions? Sure. <laughs> cool. What is the culture like at UC Berkeley? Uh, I think a very supportive, uh, hardworking, but fun culture. Will online learning replace physical learning? Whoa. Um, I think it's starting to shift a lot in that direction, but I personally really like to meet the people I'm learning from. What is something you miss about where you grew up? Um, I'd say the food, the food, yeah. What time do you wake up? Um, 8.20. What website do you absolutely love to spend time on? Um, let's see. <laughs> I, I try to avoid spending too much time on any websites. <laughs> Favorite machine learning paper of 2017? Who? Um, I'm going to pass on that. It seems too, too, too picky too. <laughs> if you could meet one person, who would it be? If I could meet one person, who could it be? Um, Roger Federer. Favorite car? Uh, I, I prefer my bike. <laughs> What's it like working with physical robots? It's, it's been really surprising how people connect so strongly when they see physical robots do things. I never anticipated this when bringing people by for the first time in the lab. Bravest thing you've ever done? Uh, I'm not the one to take a lot of risks, I would say. <laughs> what is one thing that scares you? Um, I like to take good care of my health, I guess. <laughs> Favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Do you play any instruments? No. What's more interesting, physics or neuroscience? Tough call, but I, I'm, I, I've been more inclined to study physics so far. Best present you've ever received? Whew. No, no. <laughs> what is something you do to relax? Uh, a lot of physical exercise. Running, tennis, basketball, cycling. What is something surprising about you? Mm. Maybe that uh, back in high school, my, my, well, my goal was was try to become a professional basketball player rather than a researcher. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Uh, I prefer uh, no pets in my house. <laughs> Why do you like reinforcement learning specifically so much? I think the beauty of reinforcement learning is that it kind of gets to what um, is kind of close to what you think about when you build a real intelligent system. It's something that has tries to achieve goals, tries to learn things about the environment it's never done before, and I, f I find that very intriguing. Favorite project you used to work on? I would say Stanford Helicopter Project as a PhD student, and I think a lot of it was the big pains we went through to get to the results. Um, which made it yet more rewarding to, to get to them. What project are you currently working on? A lot of our work is, so there's a few things going on. At Berkeley, a lot of the work is on reinforcement learning, imitation learning, meta-learning. At Embodied Intelligence, we're trying to put this into practice and get real robots in the real world to do these things. And then at grade scope, we're trying to do now AI for grading. Automatically grade your homework and exams or largely automatically grade them to uh, let teachers spend time on other things. If you could repeat one experience again, what would it be? Um, repeat one experience again, what would it be? Whew, I'll pass on that for now. <laughs> Why do you think deep learning has gotten so popular recently? I think it's, it's getting really good results on problems that people just weren't able to get the same results on. Think computer vision, speech recognition, learning to play video games, learning to control robots. Problems that seemed out of reach for a very long time, and now there's real tangible progress. What's your favorite operating system? Mac OS for me. Do you play any sports? Um, I, play, I try to play a lot of sports. Uh, my favorite ones are tennis, basketball, and uh, running. What's one source you use to stay up to date in machine learning? Um, definitely archive is uh, critical uh, and then news feeds like Kirpathy's Archive Sanity Preserver and also on Twitter. I follow a lot of people that post their papers on Twitter. What's one ML researcher you follow on Twitter? Just a random one. Huh, Jeff Dean. 
Programming language of choice for machine learning. I should admit that as a professor, I don't write a lot of code. Um, so it's mostly my students who, who write the code. So I don't really have a preference here. Favorite professor? Favorite professor? No, I'll go with my PhD advisor, Andrew Rain. Why do you think programming is fun? I think programming is fun because in a very short amount of time, you can do very powerful things compared to any other engineering discipline where typically it takes days, weeks, months to build something. In programming, you can build something in an hour that actually does something. Last person you talked to on the phone? Um, not sure. <laughs> yeah. You get an all expenses paid trip to one country. Where do you go? Uh, Australia. <laughs> Would you live on Mars? <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> Depends on who comes along with me. What's one thing you can't live without? Exercise. What is one skill you wish you had? Um, I wish I had time to polish more programming skills, which I'm not finding time for anymore. What is, the la what is usually the last thing you do before bed? I do a few dedicated stretches and breathing exercises that get me into sleeping mode. What text editor do you use? I use Sublime. Sublime. What open source library do you really like? I personally don't use them myself, but I know my group benefits a lot from TensorFlow and PyTorch. What was a hard problem your team recently solved? Um, I, so super recently, those results are not public yet, um, but there'll be a couple papers coming out that be, I'm very excited about. Of things that are already public, I would say the one-shot visual imitation where work led by Chelsea Finn, we were able to learn from videos of humans showing how to do something rather than from teleoperating robots, and the robot can learn from that. What's the goal for embody.ai? Our goal is, our long-term goal is essentially make physical goods as readily available and as cheaply available as digital goods by making manufacturing and logistics extremely, extremely streamlined. Best advice you've ever received? Um, Let's see. Maybe not, maybe I wouldn't say explicit advice, but I think maybe what I hold the closest to my heart is uh, what I've seen from being Andrew Ring's PhD student is um, how kindness is always in everything he's, he's doing and how you know, that is just a really important value no matter you know, what you're trying to achieve. What's one piece of advice you'd give yourself 20 years ago? Um, and that's all. And that's great, especially for companies that went on. So, yeah. Pretty happy with how, th how things have gone. I don't think I would give myself any other advice. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> not, I'm not saying I went down the shortest path on everything, but I think sometimes going down a path that ends and having to restart is not a bad thing. Do you spend more time on the internet or real life? <laughs> I spend most of my time um, behind a computer. Uh, and as a way to essentially communicate about research with my collaborators. What's something you've learned in the past month? Um, I would say what I've learned in the last month is that I have not found any time to read any papers and I need to change that. <laughs> if you ran the world, what is one law you'd enact immediately? If I were to rule the world, is that what you said? Yeah. Wow, what a hypothetical. Um, I think it's really complicated to, to put things in place, but I, I think, you know, if just in general people, if we could somehow find a way for people to be more kind of just generally kind in everything they do, I think a lot of problems would be resolved. Is the singularity near? Not sure what's near, but uh, I guess given we started embodied intelligence, we think there's still, you know, a lot to be done with regular AI before the singularity will take over. If you were to start from scratch today, what is a learning resource you would use to learn machine learning? So, it's a couple of things I would use. I would um, look at fast.ai to learn a few things from there. Um, I would look at Andrew Ings, uh, deep learning.ai, 
course, I would look at Andre Karpathy's deep learning course. And then I would look at the DeepRL bootcamp that we built last summer. And also Sergey Levin's deep reinforced learning course. And all of those are available online, so anybody can start working with those. Favorite subject in school when you were growing up? Physics. If you could be a superhero, who would it be? I, I guess I, if, I, if I could be a superhero, I'm not too familiar with most superheroes, so maybe I'll pick a real world person. I'd like to be somebody who really makes a lot of difference, so I think the way Elon Musk is tackling things like climate change bottom up by building companies that can really make a change, I find that really inspiring. What's your spirit animal? Uh, koalas. What do you predict comes next after the deep learning hype? I, I think what we've seen with deep learning is, at the essence, leverage the things that are today available that you didn't have before. More data, more compute. And so I see a trend where we'll continue to have more data, more compute. So if anything comes about that can leverage even better more data, more compute. Maybe meta learning if you consider it separate from deep learning, but I think it's part of it. But anything that really leverages the, the latest resources that are available. Five more questions. Coffee or tea? Tea. Summer or winter? Summer. Google Home or Amazon Alexa? I would switch both of them off. <laughs> Chrome or Safari? Chrome. WWDC or Google I.O.? None of them are, are the right are right for me. Nips and iClear. <laughs> awesome. All right, Peter, that's it for my questions. Uh, thanks so much for answering those. Sure. Thanks, Suresh. All right, have a good one.